This time around, I found myself growing a bit tired of the usual sliders, landing pages and menus we typically create. I wanted to try something new. So we are diving into something a bit different and very trendy, minimaps. Recently I came across an amazing minimap scroll animation on a site called Artificial Garage by Dennis Nellenberg. It really caught my eye and I thought it would be an interesting challenge to recreate using vanilla javascript. No plugins, no gsap or scroll trigger. We are also going to integrate that dynamic light mode that changes the theme as you scroll, all using JavaScript. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Alright, let's get into it without wasting any more time. Let's kick things off by setting up our HTML structure. We'll begin with a wrapper. Inside this wrapper, the first thing we'll add is a navigation bar. It will have a couple of links. Next up is the gallery section. This section will be split into two main parts to create a clear layout. On one side, the minimap and on the other, the main images. It's like having two columns. Within the minimap, we'll have a preview container holding all our thumbnail images and an active image indicator that will highlight the part of the minimap currently in view. Each thumbnail will be wrapped in a div called item preview. Since we need 10 images for this demo, I'll set up one and then duplicate it nine more times to fill up the minimap. Switching over to the right column, the images container, this is where our main visual content lives. Each image will be housed within an item div split into two sections, item image for the image itself and item copy for the text description. We'll replicate this setup for each of 10 images. Lastly, at the bottom of our page, I will add a generic container filled with some placeholder content, a few headers and an image, just to give it a bit more life and context to our page layout. That's it. Let's move on to the styling part. First up, we'll reset the margins and paddings for all elements and set their box sizing to border box. We'll also specify the font family for the body. The wrapper is key here. It's set to 100% width and height with the starting background color of black. We'll introduce a transition property as well because we will animate the background color based on scroll events. Images will occupy 100% of their parents width and height and I'll set their object fit to cover to maintain their aspect ratio. Now, let's style our links, paragraphs and headers with some generic properties including color, font size, font weight, text transform, etc. For the navigation, I'm using position fixed to keep it at the top, employing flexbox to space out the links and setting some padding. The container holding the dummy website content will also take the entire available space with some padding. Moving on to the gallery, this is where it gets interesting. I'll set its position to relative so our sticky positioned elements behave correctly. The minimap particularly will be sticky positioned with its top set to zero to keep it in place as you scroll through the gallery. It will cover 25% of the width and full viewport height. We will add some top padding to push the preview images down and set the overflow to hidden which is crucial for our scrolling animation. The minimap will maintain a black background with a transition property because we will change its color during the scroll. Our active image indicator within the minimap will be absolutely positioned about 300 pixels down centered horizontally with the left and transform properties. It will have a specified width and height, a solid white border. Its mix blend mode set to difference will make it stand out against varying backgrounds. 
The preview container itself will also be absolutely positioned, centered horizontally and designed to scroll within the minimap. It will have a 100% width and a defined height based on our item previews. We'll align these thumbnails in a vertical column using Flexbox. Currently, the height of the preview container is set based on the number of the items and height of the child elements. However, you can easily verify or adjust this height by using your browser's inspect tool. Simply hover over the preview container to see the exact value. Each item preview will have a relative position with fixed dimensions similar to our active image indicator plus some padding for spacing. The images section taking up the remaining 75% of the width will have items with a specified width and height. Inside, the item image will directly match the dimensions of the item itself with each item copy styled using Flexbox to neatly align the text. To accommodate light mode, I'll use a glass toggle on the wrapper. When activated, it will switch the background and text colors accordingly. This ensures our page adopts to both light and dark modes as the user scrolls. And to ensure our design remains responsive, I will add some media queries to adjust the image item sizes on smaller screens. That wraps up our CSS. Let's move on to the exciting part, bringing all this to life with JavaScript. Once the page is ready, we start by selecting the key elements we will manipulate. We grab the main container for the images, the preview section inside our minimap and the minimap itself using document.query selector. These elements are crucial because we will be directly adjusting their positions based on the user's scroll actions. Now to handle positioning, we create a function called getElementTop. This function calculates the distance from the top of the page to any given element. It works by summing up all the distance from our element to its highest ancestor. This is vital because it tells us exactly where our images start on the page. Using this function, we determine the top position of our images container and calculate its end by adding the height of the container to its starting position. Knowing where our images start and end allows us to sync the scroll position with the minimap preview. We also grab the viewport height and the height of our preview section. These measurements are essential to understand how much space we have to work with as the user scrolls. Now, you might be wondering where the random multiplier of 2.84 for preview max translate variable came from. This value is crucial as it dictates the maximum translation of the preview container. Essentially, it tells us how far the bottom of the preview should move by the end of our scroll range. Remember we defined a fixed height for the preview wrapper in the CSS. Through the experimentation, I found that 2.84 worked perfectly based on that fixed height. However, this value may vary in your project depending on the number of items in your minimap and the dimensions of those items. I encourage you to play around with this multiplier to see how it affects where the preview stops as you scroll. Adjusting this value will help you fine-tune the synchronization of the preview with the scrolling through your content. Now here is where the magic happens. We define a handle scroll function that updates the position of the minimap as you scroll through the images. As you scroll down, we calculate your scroll position relative to the height of the images container. This calculation helps us determine how far the preview should move within the minimap. We translate the preview vertically using CSS translate Y value. The translation is proportional to your scroll position within the images container, ensuring that as you approach the end of the images, the preview also reaches the end of the minimap. This sync creates a seamless scrolling experience that visually represents where you are in the images set. Additionally, 
we add a logic to handle cases when the user scrolls beyond the images container. If the user scrolls above the start of the images, the preview resets at the top. If the user scrolls beyond the end, the preview remains at the maximum possible translation point. Next, we handle theme switching based on the scroll depth. We set a toggle point at 4 times the viewport height, basically 400 viewport height. If the user scrolls past this point, we add a light theme class to the wrapper to switch its appearance. This dynamic change enhances the user experience by adopting the page's theme to scrolling depth. Finally, we attach handle scroll and check scroll functions to the windows scroll event. This setup ensures that our page responds dynamically to user interactions as they navigate through the content. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.